Hello and welcome to this film um, about rate time graphs. It's the uh, second in the series of films about equilibrium processes and reversible reactions and there's going to be a couple of films now about graphs. Um, hopefully by the end of this one uh, you'll know what the key features of a rate time graph are, what sort of things you might look for on a rate time graph to tell you about what, uh, what kind of position an equilibrium system is in and whether it's at equilibrium or not. Okay, so let's start off by looking at a, rate, a typical rate time graph. Why is it called a rate time graph? Well, because it's got rate and it's got time on the axes. That's a good start. Okay, so if you've got rate and time on the axes, you know you're looking at a rate time graph. Um, what you often see on these rate time graphs is that there are times, particular times, marked on the axis. So times when things are happening, okay? Now if we look at T1, we've got a flat region of the graph, same thing at T3, okay? Now notice here, what this means is that the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the backward reaction in these regions. If the rate of the two reactions is the same, so remember we're talking about the forward and the backward reaction, in any reversible system. If their rates are the same, then the amounts of A and B will stop changing. In other words, the macroscopic properties will remain the same. The concentrations of A and B will remain constant because the forward and backward reactions are occurring at the same rate. So flat sections here where the two rates are the same are clearly referring to system at equilibrium. Okay. It's in this balanced state. It's it's got all the characteristics of a system at equilibrium. Okay, I'm just shortening that to EQM. If we look at this section here, where the rates are not the same, okay, we can see that something must have disrupted this equilibrium system and changed the rates of these two things relative to one another. Okay, so this region here, where the two rates are different, is a system that is not at equilibrium. Okay, so if you were asked in this question, when does the system return to equilibrium, you know that it does so at T3, because that's when the two rates become the same again. Okay, um, What happened here to cause this change, that's something we'll look at in future films. Okay, This is really just to introduce the graphs and what they look like. Okay, um, Just casting our minds back really now to some things that will affect the rate of chemical reactions, because if we're looking at the sort of things that will change the shape of a rate time graph, we need to consider what sort of factors will affect the rate of chemical reactions. And this is covered in depth when you studied collision theory. I would suggest that if you've forgotten some of this, or if you're not confident that you can give detailed explanations of these things, then it would be a good idea to go and watch the films about collision theory again. Um, but let's, uh, let's just assume that we are confident with that. We should be able to explain why temperature why catalysts and why concentrations affect the rate of chemical reactions. Okay, and you should be able to do that in detail, talking about the particles colliding. Okay, so temperature, to cut a long story short, the particles are moving faster and hitting each other harder. Catalysts, they don't need quite so much energy to react and concentration. There's more of them in a particular space. Um, so all these things will affect the rate of a chemical reaction. We need to consider how they'll do so when we look at rate time graphs, but we'll do that as we move through the other films. Just a quick note here is uh, to say that pressure is often lumped together with concentration, and the reason for that is well because concentration is often given in moles per litre, so we're measuring how much of a substance there is in a particular volume. Okay, And pressure is also a measure of how much gas there is in a particular volume container. The higher the amount, number of moles you have in a particular volume, the higher the pressure will be. So these are often kind of treated as very, very similar things. They're not the same, obviously, but they're often treated as similar. Okay, so that's a very brief overview of rate time graphs. Next film is about concentration time graphs. So um, that would be a good one to move on to next, if you've understood what's in here.